Hi friends, it's Danielle with Northland Flower Farm. Today I thought it would be fun to take a look back at the creation of the hydrangea room and watch how it evolves over the course of the year. So let's get started right at the beginning. It's early March and we're removing lots of sod from this area near one of the apple trees to create the left side for this hydrangea room. Here's a look at some footage I took back in 2019 from this exact area so you can kind of get a sense of what it looked like before we started on this project. So after we removed the sod, we laid down a generous layer of compost, got that all spread out, and then we moved on to building some arches. I wanted to create a flower tunnel like I had seen in Sarah Raven's book, A Year Full of Flowers. That's one of my favorite books. I'll link it in the description section below. She has some arches in one of her gardens and they are just filled with sweet peas. I wanted to do something similar on a smaller scale and I knew I wanted to grow cup and saucer vine for the hummingbirds. So you'll kind of see that progress as we walk through the months together. Do you have a garden that changes a lot through the growing season or does your garden stay the same over the course of the season? I love both kinds of gardens and what mine does is it really changes a lot from March to October. It looks quite different each month and I really enjoy that. So now it's about a week later and we brought in those garden borders so that they meet the arches so that we can get those vines planted up the arbors after the last frost. And what we did really early on in the season was we started planting hydrangeas, of course. The first thing we did was plant six invincible ruby hydrangeas in between each arch. They did really well, but this year they're going to take off and look absolutely stunning. I can tell it must be late March when I'm taking this footage because I see that I have all my cool flowers in the ground. What looks like just kind of random basil plants throughout this entire garden is Orlea. That's what I'm pointing to right now. There's also poppies there, starflower, larkspur, and some lisianthus. Around this time, I also planted some sensational honeysuckle, which I think was my husband's favorite addition to the hydrangea room. He was always commenting in the evening how he really liked the smell. So here we are now in April. Beautiful new green growth is emerging, but still not a lot to look at. So of course, time to plant some more hydrangeas. On this day, we planted together a Haas Halo Hydrangea, Invincible Spirit 2 Hydrangea, and did we plant an incredible together that day, friends? We planted so many hydrangeas, I think I lost track. I think the best thing about gardening is having these garden companions. I don't know what I would do without Grace by my side. Grace has been with me for four years now, and I think she's one of the best things that has ever happened to me, both as a person and as a gardener. She just brings a lot of extra joy into my life. So here we are, late April. The garden is starting to take shape, but nothing is really in bloom yet. Now, how about that for a change, friends? Here we are in May. A lot of the cool flowers are either in full bloom or just about to burst into bloom. You can see the Orlea is in full bloom. We were able to harvest a lot of that together and sell it in mixed bouquets at the flower stand. It's definitely something that I'm going to repeat this year. I might even do these big drifts in additional locations in the garden. I have a few drifts going over in the driveway. I think it almost looks like another lace cap hydrangea in bloom to have the Orlea over in this garden. What do you think? Well, now it's June in the garden and what are we doing? We're planting more hydrangeas, of course. We're planting a beautiful pink lace cap hydrangea and also we added in some small panicle hydrangeas. I could tell by this point that I had enough smooth hydrangeas, but I felt like we were probably going to be lacking with the panicles later on in the late summer. 
So we added in some today. Here I am adding in another lace cap hydrangea. All of these hydrangeas on the left side of the screen, they're pretty small right now, but most of them are going to reach heights of three to four feet. Give them about three to four years on that. I just showed my rain barrel there and people often ask about that. I don't have a ton of experience with rain barrels. It's the only one I've ever owned. We purchased it on Amazon. I absolutely adore it. We're going to purchase another one this year for um, one of the corners of our house because that one's on the corner of the garage but I use it all the time. I don't even own a hose. I just use my rain barrel for everything. So here's a look at the hydrangea room, a sunny day in June. This to me, it's heaven. It's heaven on earth. It doesn't get much better than this. The pinks, the whites, the greens, the subtle lavenders. This is really what I had dreamed that the garden would look like in my mind. And for that brief moment in June, it really seemed to all come together, work together and happen. I really hope that by sharing this video as we walk through the seasons that you see too, that there are some times in the garden where things look really great. There are some times when things are lacking. There are some times when things need a lot of help. That's just how it goes. Now, I think I have continued to take footage of this specific view in the garden because it's my favorite. Invincible Mini Mabet is that deeper rose-colored hydrangea. The dusty pink one is Invincible Spirit too, and the one in the distance is Annabelle. Annabelle does tend to be a real problem in terms of flopping. Here's a look at the other side of the hydrangea room in mid-June. If you see those spidery looking flowers with amaryllis looking foliage, those are Peruvian daffodils and they have amazing fragrance. Definitely give those a try. Now we're fast forwarding into July where I'm just cleaning up and deadheading in the garden. We have these beautiful sugar plum gladiolas in bloom on either side of the arbors and all of the pink hydrangeas have started to fade and turn green. This is also the time in the garden when most of my cool flowers are just done. It's just too hot here and I have to remove most of them from the garden and plant something else. Mid to late July was when I really started to see the cup and saucer vine start to flower. I had planted six plants, unfortunately, over the course of the growing season. I lost both the plants on the front arbor and I'm really not sure why when I pulled them up, the root system looked all right. So it seemed almost like a sudden death. So let me know if you've had that experience, a complete and sudden death to your cup and saucer vine seemingly overnight. I think it happened in the course of about two days. So here's something I did, which to be honest with you, I almost immediately regretted. Have you ever done something like that in the garden? I planted three baby Kim lilacs because I think I was stuck on, oh my goodness, I don't have any blooms in spring over here. Not thinking about the bulbs for some reason, but I think I'm going to remove these very soon. I really wanna stick with as many hydrangeas as possible. So this footage takes us into August. And for me, this is the time of year in the hydrangea room that I feel like I really need to do a lot of work here. There's a lot of beautiful whites, greens, and ivories, but I really want the presence of pink and purple no matter what month it is. So if you are in a similar area, I'm here in zone 6B, Southern Pennsylvania, a very humid and wet climate. You can see the apple tree um, is kind of falling through the arbors. Isn't that beautiful? But if you have any suggestions for maybe a shrub that blooms pink around that time of year, um, I'm all ears. I would love to hear all about it and learn from you. Now fast forward to the middle of October and all those panicle hydrangeas that were white in August, they've either turned a deep mauve, 
a dusty pink or a subtle rose and once again this garden feels right to me again to have just some more color over here i think that's what i'm lacking in august it's just it's a little too white and i'm not really into that i really really love dark colored flowers dark colored flowers and foliage are my favorite so maybe even something with dark foliage and a pink flower that blooms mid to late august is what i need in that previous footage that you saw i wish i would have captured this garden in early november as a lot of these pinnacle hydrangeas the foliage on them turns yellow so there was a week also in early november when it looked really spectacular and there was kind of another change that occurred also by october the cup and saucer vine was just going crazy the plants had traveled all the way up and over the arches and they were still blooming. And here's that view yet again that I keep showing you, but now we're in October and the strawberry sundae hydrangea is just this vibrant hot pink, but maybe more of a hot rose color is the right way to describe it. Really just absolutely stunning in mid-October. So now we're in late October, I've harvested lots of dahlias and I'm trying to decide what in the world to do with all of these cup and saucer vine flowers. I ended up cutting all the ones that you see here, bringing them inside and making a flower arrangement. But I tell you the truth, friends, the day that I did that, I accidentally brought in three bumblebees that were hiding in the blooms and I had to very carefully take them all back outside. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining me for this little look back at the hydrangea room. I'm excited to plant more hydrangeas next year. And let's just say there might be another hydrangea area in the works. Bye.